In this video we're going to tie a fly called the Moorish Mayday. First thing we're going to do is just start right in the middle of the shank of the hook. And then we're going to take some either Zelon or some Sparkle yarn. Both materials work equally as well. We're just looking for kind of this grayish sparkly yarn material. I'm going to take a chunk that when it's not poofed out, so if you just let it sit there, it's about half the diameter of a pencil. We're going to take a about a two inch section here. We're going to tie this in right on top of the shank of the hook, right in the middle of the hunk of the yarn. Now we're going to trim out some of this yarn at the back end of the fly. For the tail, that hunk is way too much. So we're going to take a good chunk of that yarn out. And we can wrap down the back of the shank of the hook here all the way to the bend. Still have a few little pieces that got stuck in there. Now we're ready to dub our body. For our body we're just going to use some olive or light olive hairline dubbing. You can use a lot of other dubbings for this. You can use super fine dubbings. I like something that has a little bit of shag to it. I think Morris uses something with a little bit of shag as well. Just so a few fibers kind of stick out giving it that buggy that buggy appearance. We're going to dub it nice and sparse to begin with just so we can get it started and we'll wrap it forward. You have to be careful not to overdo it with the dubbing but you do want to build just a little bit of a taper. And we're going to take our thread to just in front of our wing, basically. And then I'm going to take a few wraps and just wrap up the wing kind of very loosely with my thread. All this is going to do is it's going to give me kind of a little bit of a stiff point <clears throat> to wrap up that wing. Then we're going to take a whiting rooster cape feather. We're going to take a grizzly one here. You want to slightly undersize the hackle on this fly. So I want the hackle fibers just kind of reach back and touch the back end of the fly. Then we're going to take that rooster feather here. We're just going to tie it in right in front of our wing. I'm going to take that feather and just wrap it around that wing. I'm going to wrap it up about five or six wraps and I'm going to go back down. I'm going to take all that material and just kind of lightly stroke it back out of the way, kind of splitting those hackle fibers. And you can sneak in and trim out your, your hackle. and any other fibers that kind of get trapped. Always a few. Now 
Now we're going to dub the thorax. We're going to use that same olive hairs you're dubbing. We're going to dub this just a little bit bulkier than we did kind of the back end of the body. Not much though, just a little bit. We're going to leave about a hook eye's length of space right up by the hook eye. So I need to leave a little bit of a pad or spot for me to finish off the fly. So I've got to be careful not to go too far forward. And then I'm going to take my thread to about that hook eye's length away from the eye. I'm going to stroke all those fibers of the hackle kind of back and out of the way. I'm going to do a loose wrap with my thread right on top of that wing. Another loose wrap. And I can really bite down nice and tight on that wing. Then, if you take a couple more tight wraps, I'm going to pull the wing back. I'm going to take my thread and just bite down with a couple nice tight wraps right, kind of on top of the head. And you can see I leave a little bit of a bump there from that sparkle yarn. That kind of looks like the, the head of the mayfly. That's the look that we're going for. We can trim our tail. I like my tail to be about the length of the body. And the wing are like nice and tall. So I'm going to trim it about the length of the tail. Maybe just a little bit shorter than the tail. And you can always cut it down after the fact. Then I'm going to take my wing and I'm going to pinch all the fibers I'm going to first kind of draw them up, take all the fibers, pinch them together, and I'm going to cut at a downward angle, kind of back, down and back onto the fly. All I'm doing that there is just kind of shaping, shaping the wing, making it kind of look like a mayfly's upright wing. That's the Moorish May Day. It's a great little mayfly pattern. You can tie it in a few different colors. You can tie it in a blue and olive color like we did here. You can tie it in a calabatus color, a brown color. There's really no end to the, the colors that you can tie this fly on. Makes it very, very versatile. Sits nice and flush to the water as well. Trimming up some of that extra shag from my dubbing. But very good fly from Mr. Morish. And very effective on selective trout uh, when they're eating mayfly emergers that are just kind of stuck in the film. Uh, this is a great pattern for that. And that is the Morish Mayday.